Good morning, everyone. To introduce botany lecture, we will going to see a very interesting kind of plants that are called hydrophytes. So these hydrophytes, these are about the plants which are present inside the water. That's why we call them the hydrophytes. Hydro means water, and phytes means plants. So now we have to see what kind of hydrophytes plants on Earth is present. What are their basic characteristic, and what are the modification and adaptation qualities they have to survive inside water? Let's begin the introduction part here. So this is a Greek term when we are talking about the hydrophyte. This is a Greek term means hydro uh, that is the water and phyton that is the plant. So we can normally call them the water plant. As it is a Greek and international nomenclature according, that's why we are calling them the hydrophytes plant here. So the plants they mostly grow in the as they are the water plants, so they have to be grow inside the wet places, or sometimes they can be totally submerged inside the water, sometimes they can partially submerged in the water, and sometimes even they are present inside the muddy areas. So these are some ecological conditions which can be seen when we are talking about the hydrophytes plant. There are some very well example of the hydrophytes plant like Eutricularia, Valicinaria, Hydrilla, Carrera, Nitella, Lotus, Tretophyllum, Trepa, Pistia, Echaishunia. So these are the very, you can say, these are the very uh, objective plant which uh, tell us all the characteristic features which are present inside the hydrophytes plant. Also, some wolfia. If we uh, we're going to talk about the wolfia because these have some taxonomical importance inside the hydrophytes studies. So basically, aquatic environment provide a maximum matrix for the plant growth, in which temperature fluctuation is at minimum, and the nutrition occurs mostly in dissolved state, but light and oxygen become deficit. So not everything will be proper in every situation. Like if a plant is that is uh, present inside on site in the terrestrial place or inside the land, or if there are some water deficit conditions, so they are having some problem. So same as some problem also happen inside the aquatic plant or you can say the water plant. Means they have plenty of water inside them for them. For, but there are something which they need, and that is the most important thing is oxygen. Not only us, plant also need oxygen for their respiration process. How they make oxygen, that's a very valid point. But for their respiration process, they also need oxygen. You can say when they are doing the photosynthesis process or when they are making the food for us, at that time, oxygen will be released as a byproduct. That is a different thing. But if we wanted to see how plant inhale, that will also inhale through the oxygen and they also release the carbon dioxide. Sometimes they also utilize their carbon dioxide for the making of the food process. So they are not as dependent as on us for the oxygen because they can either they whatever the reducible carbon dioxide, they can use it in the photosynthesis process and also Whatever the oxygen they are going to inhale, they can produce more than that. So that's why they are better than us. So there are plenty of things which are going to use inside the water, like donation of aquatic vegetation with increased depth is a device for maximum utilization of light energy. So that depend like how the light energy will be uh, using for the making of the food and anything. This is also uh, affect the plant growth and development process, like the intensity of light or in what depth plant is present. So there are several things which are going to influence the developmental pattern of the hydrophytes. Let's begin. This is a very beautiful uh, picture of you can see a hydrophyte that is trapa. Now we see the classification part. So there are three broad categories in which our hydrophytes are divided. The very first category is the submerged hydrophytes that are, as the name suggests, they are basically entirely uh, dipped inside the water. So they are submerged inside the water. Floating hydrophytes, they float or like the floating is like kind of swimming. So the plant which can swim over the surface of water 
we can call them the floating hydrophiles. Third one is amphibious hydrophiles. So this amphibious, whenever we term, uh, listen, term this amphibious, this is all about whenever one single thing having two characters inside them. So this two character phase, whenever this two character present inside of one thing, they will be called as the ambitious, uh, amphibious thing. So here in this context, like the hydrophyte context, this we are calling them the amphibious. What are their motto? Basically, these plant, if they are going to survive also in the terrestrial phase and the water phase. So now they are having two characteristics in single plant. They can be live on the surface. They can be live also the under the water. Like in the case of uh, animals, frog have that kind of uh, you can see capabilities like they can live inside the water and they can also live on the surface so that's why we call them the amphibians so same if a hydrophyte which have both the qualities to live in uh, water and on the land then we can call them the amphibious hydrophytes so we will be taking the first type of hydrophytes here that is the submerged hydrophytes Plants which grow below the water surface and are not in contact with the atmosphere are called the submerged hydrophytes. Very uh, elaborated definition here. That the, if the plant, they are totally inside the water, like no part will be on the uh, environmental touch or you can see in the touch of air. So that plant will be called as a submerged hydrophytes. So such plant, may be free floating, but they are also two types if we see their further classification. The very first, the free floating plant, and second one is a rooted plant. Means, if they are having root and they are stick to the surface under the water, they will be called as rooted. But if they do not have root, they are not a stick at a one place, but they are floating under the water, in that condition, we are going to call them the free floating plants. Here, there are some many examples which are going to support that kind of plants like Wilson area, Hydrilla, Pumadilla, Nazas, Trifilum, Manufilum, Eutric area, Cara, Nutella. There are the very, you can say, the very definitive plants which can easily uh, define all the part of the hydrophyte in the case of free floating and rooted plant. Next, here, there are the diagrams you can see. This one, that is a submerged plant, okay? So the very first diagram, A, that is a kind of submerged plant. And this one, these are the submerged, but they are the floating one. You cannot see any kind of root formation at their basis, okay? There are no root formation. They are just having the stem, they are having leaves only. Okay, so if they are not, uh, they do not have roots, so we cannot call them the rooted one. But if they are, if they are going to have the roots, we will call them the rooted plant. In that case, the floating hydrophiles, they just float on the surface. Okay, they do not submerge, or you can say, this is the half-half condition. Half part of the plant will be the underwater, and half plant, uh, half part of the plant will be on the surface. So. They are called, they are in the floating or swimming way. That's why we are calling them the floating hydrophytes. These plants are in contact with both water and air because the upper part there will be contact in the air and the lower part is contact in the water. They may or may not be rooted in the soil. That uh, uh, situation based thing, if they are rooted, roots present, so they can be rooted, not they cannot be rooted. Or if they are just floating or they don't have any kind of root, they will be known as the free floating hydrophile. So they are just free from the foundation to the surface. Now these plants float freely on the surface of water but are not rooted in the mud. They will be called as free floating. Very suitable example are Wolfia ahiza, Wolfia microscopia, Prapa, just the diagram we already see photograph so these are plants which are the freely float on the surface they do not uh, underlie or they do not root it under the surface this you can see they do not have any root 
this also having fibrous root they are having roots so they are some free floating and there are some the thing which are having roots and they are also basically uh, you can say they are just attached to the surface under the water so they will be the rooted floated but rooted but free floating they do not have any kind of fruit they are just floating on the surface that is floating but rooted so some much plant are rooted in muddy substrate of pond river and lakes but their leaves and flowering shoots float on above the water surface so basically their roots the plant having three fundamental part one is the stem second one is a root and third one is a leaf so these stem and leaf portion the leaf and if they are having the flowers at that time so the leaves and flower they will be floating on the water surface but their downward stem portion and their root they will be under the water so if this kind of situation will be seen inside the plant they will be called as a floating but rooted and a very good example of floating but rooted is lotus a significant lotus is an example of floating but rooted hydrophytes pictoria regia and uh, keratopetris thalicoda these are all the you can say they are the very variety of the plant which are present inside the plant body you can see the diagrams here rooted hydrophytes diagram with floating leaves you can see these diagram they are like uh, this one the very beautiful lotus here so you can see the lotus have a very large petioles these are not the stem lines okay these are the petioles so basically their uh, roots uh, which bind them to the surface but their long petiole lift the uh, leaves and the flower to the float on the surface so major role of the uh, floating but rooted plants they are having played by the petiole and they are larger uh, lamina based of the leaves so they are larger lamina based leaves and these long petiole they needed to be play a very major role for the floating of leaf and flower now our third type that is the amphibious type of the hydrophytes so let's look on the amphibious type of hydrophytes so as uh, i already told you about the how the amphibian plant look alike or what are their basic characteristics so these plant they are adapted to both aquatic and terrestrial mode of life so they can be live inside the water or they can also live inside the or on the surface so the amphibious plant they sometimes grow in a shallow water on the muddy substrate okay what happen like uh, if a time is a monsoon okay and some plant which are growing near the river bank or the pond or the lake what happen when the rain comes that area become swallow or muddy so that shallow water area or the muddy area at that time if a plant can grow inside that situation also but as the rainy season went off and the winters coming or the summers coming at that time also that plant living on that terrestrial plane so this uh, type of the plant which can be uh, found for both the type of situation they are the true kind of amphibious plant because in this situation climate do not have any role to play in this situation the plant have to play their major characteristic their adaptation quality how they are adapting for each and every kind of weather and their uh, uh, you can say their changes their mutation they work on them and they make them like ubiquitous like they can be present anywhere or, or present in any kind of situation so amphibious plant which grow in saline marshy places are term as a halophytes there are another term which can be used but that is a conditional term conditional for salinity if some uh, plants which grow in a high saline nature okay the plant having the high salinity so this salinity based plant which are growing inside them they can call the halophytes okay don't uh, forget this these terms they are very important when you are going to uh, run long botany classes that the halophyte hydrophyte xerophytes epiphytes 
and karyophytes so these uh, terms which you have to be remember root and some part of the stem and leaf in these plant may be submerged in water or buried in mud but some foliage branches and flowering shoots spring well above the surface so in that case only they are also like a little like the submerged plant well like uh, some part of there that can be under the muddy area and the upper part like the leaf their upper uh, upper stem portion their flower they will be over the left you can see the diagram the very clear diagram here these are the roots okay this uh, till that these are under the water this is a rooted emerged hydrophytes okay rooted emergent so till that portion they will be under the water like you can see a light uh, this uh, grayish appearance that is for the level of water and the upper portion that is on the if they are on land they will be on land if they are on the inside the water they will be above the surface of water next here the hydrophytic adaptations now whatever the thing we studied for those thing for those things to be happen inside the plant plant needed to do some adaptations or plant needed to do some changes and this is very important like how plant make them at this level of competence to have these all feature inside them so very first morphological adaptations here so morphology we all know the thing we can see from the outside structure okay so any outside structure like color like structure shape that is come under the morphological analysis so what kind of morphological adaptation plant can do for living in a hydrophytic hydrophytic situation so very first what are the changes or what are the adaptation which come under the root so root system and hydrophytes was very poorly developed okay the very first thing the roots are not developed inside the plant so this is a first adaptation plant they, they do not develop their root why because what is the major function of the root 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 have to absorb water and for increasing the rate of absorption they go everywhere or increase their length they develop they mature but here the uh, plant itself present inside the water so they do not need any kind of very developed root system to go somewhere and uh, take the water for the plant they already present inside the plant so that's why they are having a very poorly developed root, plant, uh, root system which may or may not be branched in submerged hydrophytes so sometimes they not even branched this single thread of the root can be present not branched root are meaningless as body which is directed contact with water act as absorptive surface it's of water in mineral so that's why they are just uh, uh, developed uh, root is a meaningless thing for the hydrophyte they don't need it so that's why just they are uh, attached their whole body is attached with the water so whenever they want water they will take it so they, this may probably be the reason why root and hydrophytes are reduced or absent that obviously this is the reason roots of floating hydrophytes show very poor development of root hairs sometimes they do not have any kind of root hair also now we will talk about the stem so what are the modifications will stem take place here in aquatic plant a stem is very delicate and green and yellow in color in some cases it may be modified into rhizome or grana now why the stem is very delicate here? first uh, first of all why they are delicating because if something remains inside the plant that thing we can naturally okay if you uh, dip something out like if we have to make some cereals or we wanted them to be weak out we just soak them in inside the water a day earlier so this is the same thing happens with that poor stems because they needed to be uh, dipped out inside water to, through all their life so that's why this stem are delicate green because they need to do the photosynthesis because sometimes leaves are not present and sometimes they are floating so that's why they have to be green to do the function of photosynthesis modification in rhizome why we why they do that because rhizome is a combination feature of root and stem so there are no root or uh, developed root present here 
So their stem uh, basically behave like a weakened root portion. Runner. Runner, so that's why runner formation is happen because they just uh, floating like on the surface. So that's why they don't have that much rigidity to be maintained inside or rigid characteristic. That's why they can be function as a runner. I will show you the diagram in a point two figure. Then how a runner look like leaves. So if we talk about their leaves, that they are generally palatate. Okay, palatate long. Circular, light or dark in green, thin or very smooth. So they can be like anything. Okay, they can be palatate. They can be long. They can be circular. Sometimes color differ. Sometimes dark. Sometimes light, thin and very smooth. But what is the most important thing is here that their upper surfaces, if they are exposed in the air, and lower surfaces are generally in touch with the water. So at that time, the presence of a stomata that matter, okay? Stomata have to be present for the transpiration. So at the upper surface, there are most of the stomata present. What happen inside? The, first, take it this: uh, in normal plant, the stomata always present on the lower side of the leaf, but in hydrophytes, for Increase the rate of reaction, uh, rate of transpiration. Their stomata is present on the upper side because they do not have to worry about the water, how water will be transpirated. Okay, so that's why their stomata present on fully flash mode on the upper surface of the leaf, and uh, they do as much transpiration they can do. Next, plant petiole of leaves show indefinite power of growth. So this is also a very important feature. What happen inside the terrestrial plant? Their petiole is very small, like like one inch more, mostly one inch, two inch maximum. But in this case, there are several meters, like ten meter, fifteen meter. They can have. They do not have a uh, like definite growth pattern here. They just grow as the nutrition they take place. They divide meristematic cell dividing and dividing, and increasing the length of the petiole. So this is the fundamental adaptation. This leaf portion take for the floating purpose. They need to float, and for the floating, they need some long petioles. So this was all about the morphological features. Now we will have to see what are the physiological adaptation in take place inside the hydrophytes. So morphological is all about the outer thing, okay? But now the physiology is all about the inner portion. How something or what kind of inner changes will be happen inside the plant body in their function? Basically, physiology is a study of functionology of the organ of plant. Now, the aquatic plant exhibit a low compensation point and low osmotic uh, concentration of cell sap. The very first thing is low compensation point or low osmotic concentration of cell sap. So, if they are having a low osmotic uh, concentration, that's why they will not absorb the water. If they are having the high osmotic concentration, they will absorb the water. But if they are not, they will never gonna absorb water, and that's they want. They do not want water to be absorbed because they already have plenty of them. Osmotic concentration of cell cells is equally or uh, slightly higher than the water, so they always have the this. Uh, Concentration of the osmotic concentration. Okay, that sap is equal or slightly higher than the water. So the concentration, if the higher, okay, concentration will be higher, then they will be not going to absorb that. Nutrient are absorbed by the submerged plant through the gen general plant surface. Normally, how the nutrient will be taken from from the water. The gases are exchanged from the water through the surface cell. Now the exchange of the gases. From the or the water through the surface cell that will be done by the epidermal cell, not by the some lenticles opening, not by the stomata on the surface or stem. They all will be done by the surfaces. The gases produced during photosynthesis and respiration are partially retained in the air chambers of parenchyma to be utilized as when required. Now their major issue is to store the air because they live inside the water. They do not need water, but what they need is air. Okay, so their major concern is having air inside them. So 
they made a very large air chamber inside their body and these large air chambers are known as erenchyma so these erenchyma they are abundantly present inside the these body of a hydrophytes and this erenchyma are responsible to storing the air even it can be reduced by the respiration uh, released by the respiration or it can be a byproduct of the photosynthesis either way they are going to store the air or whenever the plant going to need that oxygen or carbon dioxide they just give it to them so there is no transpiration from the submerged hydrophytes the submerged which do not expose to air but if they are the free floating their upper surface will do the transpiration but if they are totally submerged so they do not need the transpiration so that's why they also do not have any kind of stomata in them emergent plant in free floating hydrophytes have excessive rate of transpiration so because they have the surface contact so that's why they can do as much transpiration as they can do mucilage cells this is very important physiological thing inside a hydrophyte that is mucilage cell and mucilage canal because if something remain inside the water the ma major problem of there for the decaying okay if the something last long inside the water the major problem will come for the decay process so that's why this mucilage cell and their mucilage canals they basically help to restore the plant body they do not let them to decay inside the water so this is a major physiological adaptation having the mucilage cells and canals to protect the plant body from decaying you can see here there are also some reduced xylem cylinder because xylem have the function for the trans uh, sorry for transportation of the water but there no need of the transportation of water because every surface can get water from anywhere so that's why their xylem is reduced this otherwise xylem have a very high lumen very large size very large quantity of cells but in the case of hydrophytes they are very reduced just because of that water thing so uh, these all are the basic kind of the hydrophytes adaptation which are present inside the hydrophyte plants some also there are some evolutionary uh, you can say some evolutionary adaptations also which come by other time evolutionary is a mutation on the basis of the time so at that time also because of the pollution has been increased the water uh, thing is not as pure as it was before so at that uh, for surviving in that manner or you can say surviving that polluted water they also made something like on that that the very first thing here the deposition of silica nowadays whenever the researchers are doing research on the plants so they are seeing a large uh, you can say a very thick coating of the silica on the wall of epidermal tissue why this silica covering on these tissue are showing here major region of this silica presence on the surface of their tissues is just because that their uh, silica help that plant to protect them from the inside and outside and also the rate of toxicity the rate of toxicity that was created by the pollutants inside the body of you can say inside the water that can also be reduced a very optimum level by the deposition of silica and critical so that's why the silica deposition can be seen in the cells of these hydrophytes plant also if we talk about the very smallest kind of uh, hydrophyte you can see the wall here okay i showed you somewhere in the diagram this so let me take you back a little hmm. here yes. this is the smallest kind of the hydrophytes the uh, category of the wall uh, wall here so they are the very smallest kind of the hydrophytes and they basically present in a free floating version inside the plant body but they are you can say they are the very smallest type of uh, 
the one and the very largest one is from the this this is a nilopentia type of the flower which have a multiple petiolated version inside them they can be the largest petiolated plant also usually uh, because of their petiole size like the 25 meter petiole size that is the largest one so uh, on the basis of that petiole size we uh, you can say we determine them that they are the largest one you can also see, uh, see that how the petiole can take a rumble position inside the pre uh, rooted but hydrophyzed plant so their roots have to be uh, stick them inside the surface but their uh, major proportion to hold on on the surface they just taking this rumble position also so these kind of taking these kind of positions and uh, increasing their length of petiole having the large pinna these also come under the adaptation phase these are or you can see these are also a very important kind of adaptations that can be seen inside the hydrophyte plants so i think this is all about the hydrophyte plant or you uh, understand it like uh, we are having three kind of hydrophyna somebody we you see hydrophyte plant are the plant which live inside or little outside the water they can be broadly divided into three broad categories the very first is a uh, submerged hydrophyte which totally dissolve under the water second one is a free floating or floating um, hydrophyte which can be freely float on the surface of water or sometime they can be rooted under the surface and their leaf or half portion of that plant are floating over the surface at that time we call them the floating hydrophytes the very third is a amphibious type so we already discussed the amphibious which are having the two character inside one body so what are the these two character here two characters are of like they can be live on the terrestrial means land and they can also live inside the plant body or inside the water body so when they are having this two kind of character inside of one body they will be called as a amphibious type of hydrophyte adaptation we already see so this is all about the hydrophyes now i think on the basis of these all i taught you you can be able to answer these questions like the heterophyllous plant are found as heterophyllous okay which are hetero or phyllous means which are having two character in them so you can answer it among the following which is not a characteristic of hydrophyes so there are four options in which you have to find which is not a characteristic of hydrophyte plant third is hydrophyte have which one is the most suitable character is present inside the hydrophyte body fourth question is here plant growing near sea shore will usually have zero for the characteristic like thick leaves because why that plant which near the sea okay and is still showing the zero for the characteristic means water deficit characteristic so why they are showing that uh, water deficit characteristic this is a little tricky question but i think you will get it fifth question is an aquatic plant with floating leaves have what are their stomata opening they are a floating leaves means they are can they are in contact with the air so on which surface this stomata will be present sixth question here plants such as pandurus and rhizophora are example of you can use rhizophora i just told you a stem adaptation so i think you will answer that on basis of that uh, elaboration in general a plant most likely to survive in area where temperature is high relative humidity is low and wind prevalent would have leaves so what kind of leaves will be present there hydrilla and valsenera are example of i think you can answer it like we studied already three type of hydrophytes some was floating and amphibian and also i told you each and every example of all these kind of tree plants so i think now you will answer what kind of hydria and valsenaria plant which group of plant has a face physiological dryness so i think physiological dryness dryness is mean water deficit condition i think you can answer it does it plant have longer root system because 
why the hydrophyte don't have longer root system but desert plant have i think on the basis of comparison with the hydrophyte plant you will be able to answer this question also next still this is all about the hydrophytes or water plants these are also some references you can go through if you don't have any problem and you wanted to study in a little detail you can also go through these references and clear your doubts but still if you wanted to know anything you have some confusion you wanted to ask from the lecture you can just ask me in a next lecture or just after this okay this is all for today i hope you understand all of the thing thank you